Hey everybody, welcome to Art Together. Today I thought that we would look at one of the projects the fifth graders at Orchard View are going to be doing in the next couple of weeks. And this project is called Tessellations. Um, tessellations are uh, made of shapes that repeat and they fit together very snugly, kind of like puzzle pieces. Um, some, one of my favorite artists named M.C. Escher, he is famous for creating tessellations um, shapes and tessellating artwork. So let's get started. So I'm just going to start with a square-ish, doesn't have to be perfect, piece of cardboard. It's just a part of a cereal box that I have. Then I'm going to use something to measure out the height and the width of um, my shape here. So I'm using a jelly bean. Since Easter was not that long ago, we've got some extra jelly beans laying around. So that last little bit, I'm gonna call it a half. We're, this is just rough estimating. You don't have to be precise with your measurements. So I'm gonna measure across here. All right, now I'm gonna count these up. One, two, three, four, five and a half. And then one, two, three, four, five. All right, I'm gonna label each side so I don't forget. All right, now we're gonna calculate the perimeter and the area of our little piece here. All right, so to calculate the perimeter, all we are going to do is add these numbers that we've already measured out. So I have two sides that are five jelly beans long, so five plus five is 10. I've got two sides that are five and a half jelly beans long, which makes 11 jelly beans. And then if I add 11 and 10, I get 21 jelly beans. So that's how um, long the perimeter is. If my little jelly bean were to walk around the perimeter, it would be 21 jelly beans long. To calculate the area, all we have to do is multiply five and five and a half to figure out how much area is inside of our shape. So it is about, 27 and a half jelly beans squared. So now we're going to create a tessellating shape to experiment to see if we can change either of those numbers. To create a tessellating shape, all you do is draw on one side of the square and then on one adjacent side of the square. So I have drawn on the top and on the left side. And then I'm going to cut out each one of these shapes and you have to make sure you cut only on the line. So I'm going to cut only on the line of my two shapes and you'll notice that I still have two untouched adjacent sides of my square. So this is what my square looks like now. Now I'm going to move my cutout shape from the left. I'm gonna slide it over to the right and attach it to the square using just a little piece of tape. Now I need to take the shape from the top and I'm gonna slide it down to the bottom in the same position. It's really important that it stays in the same position because this um, tessellating shape needs to be able to tessellate, which means it needs to fit together with the other shapes around it. There we go. Now let's test out and measure if the perimeter has changed. Has the perimeter, or how many steps our little jelly bean would have to take, um, have we created a larger perimeter? Have we, has it stayed the same? Have we somehow made the perimeter smaller? Let's check it out. All right, so I have measured out how many jelly beans walk along the outside perimeter of my shape here. Now we have to add all of it up. So I'm going to add up each side. So on this side, I'm gonna count, make sure I take those halves into account. Eight jelly beans long over here. Now I need to do 
this side over here. And this side is going to be 10 jelly beans long. This side will be, got lots of halves. Seven jelly beans long. And then the last side is four and a half. Awesome, so now I just need to add seven, four and a half, 10, and eight all up. And that's how long the perimeter of my new tessellating shape. So the perimeter has grown by nine and a half jelly beans. So we did change the perimeter. Now, without getting too crazy with math here, how can we figure out the area? Has the area of our shape changed? Remember, the area is the amount of cardboard that you have or paper. Um, so my piece of cardboard, has the area changed? Think about it. Think about the amount of cardboard I started with and now the amount of cardboard I still have. Has the area changed? You'll have to think about that while we make the next step. Here is where we get to have some fun and make some art. So I'm gonna take my shape and I'm gonna set it in the middle of a piece of paper and then I'm going to trace around it. And while you're tracing around it, try to take it nice and slow and make sure that whatever you're tracing with is hugging the shape that you um, are tracing. It's got, when you're tracing, it needs to be pretty precise. So take your time. It's going to require a lot of patience to get this exactly right. Now, I'm gonna slide my piece over and your shape should fit perfectly inside of the shape that you just traced. So my left edge is perfectly fitting inside of the right edge of the already traced shape. So once I've traced that side, then I'm gonna slide my shape over to the left side of the first shape that I traced and the right side of my tracing template should fit perfectly inside the left side of my first traced shape. So now you wanna fill the rest of your paper with even just partial parts of your shape template. So see how my template is going off of my paper? That is totally okay. Um, you want to, you still want to trace as much of your shape as you can, um, to fill your whole paper. That's what's going to give your artwork a really cool, repetitive, um, feel. And it will also create rhythm in your artwork. You guys know what rhythm is in music. It's something that, um, repeats in a piece of music. Well, you can create visual rhythm as well when you add repeating parts to your artwork and tessellations are all about repeating. So this is what it should look like. Then you can turn your paper whichever way you want to figure out what can you turn these shapes into. Hmm. So I decided to turn my shapes into little bunnies, little Peter Rabbits. So I added the same details on every single shape, but the things that I varied are the colors that I used, and I put the colors in a pattern. I did make his little like bow tie or co collar um, different on each bunny, but you wanna try to keep them the same as much as possible. So here are my bunnies, and here is how they repeat. I hope you guys have fun. Share these with me, because I would love to see them. Have a great day. Happy creating.